Hello, my name is Zachary Van Sliders with Old Man Gaming, and this is another kind of horrible review. Uh, we'll get to the kind of in a second. First, let's do disclaimers. Number one, don't get paid for this. I'm a house dad, so might hear stuff in the background. Uh, I might ramble on. Uh, I don't get paid, so I'm not going to go back and edit. Uh, number two, uh, I don't give games reviewed scores, because uh, I don't believe in scores for video games, because I think it's one of the most subjective, if not the most subjective forms of art there is. So I'm going to give you an overview, I'm going to give you the pros, I'm going to give you the cons, and I'm going to give you whether or not I'm going to stick with the game in question. And then finally, I usually only get a couple of hours with the game in question, though this disclaimer doesn't really apply to this one. Um, I've had quite a bit of hours with it, uh, but... Usually this is more of an everyman's just kind of like flash take on the game. Uh, so, the game we're talking about right now uh, is Borderlands 3, and you're probably wondering, Zach, you already did a Borderlands 3 review, why are you doing another one? Well, uh, if for no other reason, in honesty, uh, clickbait, uh, since it's back in the news. <laughs> but also, uh, I felt that it was uh, a good idea to go back to it, to look at the stuff that they've added so far, uh, before the new DLC drops I'll probably do a review on the DLC too. Uh, but right now, I'm talking about directly the Malawan takedown uh, and how the Bloody Harvest went and those in comparison to each other. So, uh, the reason I'm doing this also is this is going to be a holiday week, so I'm kind of taking it easy. So, this is hopefully going to be a shorter episode that I go through a little bit quicker. Um, just something to tide you guys over until next Monday when I do a proper game. So I'm not going to go into a whole overview of Borderlands 3 again. Uh, you guys, have, uh, there's another review for that that I've already put up. Go check that out. This is mainly for the stuff that they've added and how the, almost like a state of gaming in Borderlands 3 right now. And uh, I played the Malawan Takedown event, which you're watching on the screen. Um, so there are some minor spoilers in this video. Um, and I played it a few times and I wanted to give you guys my first impressions of it. Um, basically, the overview of it is you're tasked with going in and finding a super weapon that Malavon is secretly developing and destroying it in kind of like a new area. Um, this is different than other Borderlands things because what it is is you start the event um, and then there's like... I want to say there's like three major sections to it, although it's more like two. Um, you fight two and a half bosses going down in, um, and all four of you have to stay alive, um, meaning that, like, if you get downed, you can get revived for a second win, but if you die, you're out until everybody dies, and if everybody dies, you revert all the way back to either, you, if you get to the main bad guy, they give you a checkpoint right at the main bad guy, or the very beginning of the entire event, and then you've got to restart it, redo it. Um, this is supposed meant to be kind of like um, Borderlands 3's take on raids. Um, so, with that in mind, um, there are some things I love about this and some things I did not like about this. So, uh, let's go to the pros. Pros. Uh, this is really fun. Uh, for the, the the action is challenging. Um, it's nice, and I really like the added "everybody's got to stay alive" kind of feature. One thing that Borderlands has always kind of lacked to me is that fear of death. Because uh, once you get your character up to level 50, even when you're playing on the big stuff, you die, you just go right back into whatever you're doing. Um, and a lot of times, you can go right back in and you've already killed half the guys, so it's, it, you just kind of work them down by dying over and over again. So, it's really nice that this has kind of like that structure. I felt like that was, that was a lot of fun for me. That made me feel like I was in kind of like, I don't know another game. I don't know a good example because Destiny kind of just restaunts you at a spot but checkpoint if you all die over and over again. So, um, But I like that. I like that change. I like that difference. Uh, the bad guys are interesting. The bosses are very cool and different. Uh, one thing they kind of replaced with this is it's not the time consumer that like a Destiny raid is because a Destiny raid can take like an hour, two hours. I, I've been on Destiny raids. I've never completed them. I've never completed one, but I've been in them for like hours. So, one thing they replaced with this is they replaced kind of the weird mental puzzles that you have to do. Uh, in a lot of the raid segments in Destiny, there's these weird like mental puzzles uh, that 
you as a team have to kind of coordinate through. Um, they didn't put that in this, so matchmaking is easy. Uh, there's more of like a trick to each bad guy, uh, which is cool. It makes the bad guys interesting. Instead of just like straight up bullet sponges, uh, there's like a trick to actually fighting them. Uh, which isn't too hard to figure out, but still, it's enough thought put in that makes it, that kind of elevates this. Again, I don't want to go too into specifics on the bad guys. If you haven't played it, I don't want, like, total spoilers, although you're probably seeing it on the screen anyway. But, um, my other pro is the loot drops. I thought the loot drops were really good. Really good. Like, everything drops a ton of loot in this. Just a ton of loot. If I had any problem with it is that when playing with other people, they just want to run on by, whereas I want to take my time and look at the loot. Um, and that's nice. Uh, but, but Borderlands 3 has never really done loot bad, so I don't even know that this should really be mentioned, but I liked it. I liked it so far. Alright, so that brings us to the cons. Cons of this. Uh, one thing that bugs me about this, um, and one thing I love about Borderlands that this does not do, is Borderlands as into playing with other people as it is, you can also play it by yourself and you can accomplish it. Um, and you can accomplish most things. I do not like in a game, any game, where it makes it impossible to do something alone. And I know that that's kind of like a trend with multiplayer games now. Raids are usually meant to do with tons of people. Uh, and I get that. I mean, I usually just avoid the raids on Destiny now. Um, however, and, and usually, the, and, and this probably wouldn't be a problem with this, um, if they had said straight up, this is going to be a multiplayer event type thing. Um, but they didn't. Uh, the Borderlands show in which they first started talking about this, they said that you're going to be able to do it by yourself. Now, I didn't see the last Borderlands show, so I don't know what they said about it after it launched, but leading up to it, they said that it would be possible to do it by yourself. And I'm going to tell you right now, people out there, it is not possible by yourself. It just isn't. Uh, I played it on Mayhem 1, and I got decently far with people, but alone, I couldn't get past the first area. Um, and if I switched it, switched the Mayhem off and just went in normal, um, I, you could get a little bit farther, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna beat it. Uh, especially with that last bad guy, who, not gonna spoil it, is super freaking difficult. Um, and Borderlands has, in the past, had things that you can't do alone, like, um, and now they're all eluding my name, but they have raid bosses. They always had those raid bosses, but they never have said, oh, you can do those by yourself. Uh, I don't like that I can't do this by myself, that I have to match, make, and rely on other people. Um, so that's my big con for this. Uh, if there was another con, this is kind of like a .5 con, so it's not a super big con, but uh, the other thing I just want to like get out there is uh, they don't have, like, with Bloody Harvest, I know a lot of people got very irritated with it towards the end. Uh, I mean, it's still kind of going on, but it's it's wrapping up now. Uh, because in Bloody Harvest, you'd have these ghosts that jump out when you shoot them, and you had to keep doing the same mission over and over again. And, and to do that mission, you had to kill people in the normal game to get the ghosts. Um... One thing I liked about that, though, is it changed the nature of how you played the normal game. Like, as an event, like, there were these ghosts in the world, and it changed how you could play through the game. I know a lot of people didn't like that, but for me, who had started to get bored of just, like, shooting the same things over and over again, adding those ghosts in and adding their effects to combat and deciding whether to shoot them or the bad guys made things interesting for that period of time. I think the event dragged on too long. Um, it, uh, it's just too much space. <laughs> they should have gotten it a little bit smaller, just you're in, you're out. And I didn't like the weapon drops for that. If you watch our Borderlands playthrough, Borderlands 330, I, I talk in length about that. But, but still, I like the fact that, like, the entire world was affected by this change. I like that. Um, that's something that the other games do, like Destiny and stuff, and I feel like this one should do as well. Um, so that was nice, and... You don't get that with this. This is just like another area. This is something else you do, and you do it by yourself. It doesn't affect the world in any way, shape, or form. And I get, and again, I don't necessarily think that's a completely bad thing. But at the same time, uh, as far as a content drop, like unless you're doing that thing, you're not seeing any, you know, change from that thing.
which I like when something changes the world and I have to go in and kind of figure out how it changed everything. As far as whether I'm going to stick with it, you all know I'm going to stick with it. I love Borderlands 3. Uh, not quite as much as our resident Borderlands expert, uh, Philabilly330. Shout out to you. Uh, he helps me with that playthrough. Uh, but, you know, this is a channel that we do talk about Borderlands a lot on this channel. So I will probably also review the, uh, the DLC, which is coming December 19th. And I, I'm enjoying my Borderlands 3 experience. They're definitely working hard to fix it. They're definitely... I like the way they're doing a games of service kind of uh, post-launch thing. I like the, the steady stream of content we're getting. Uh, there's been kind of a reason to go back to it every two to four weeks, which is really nice. Uh, I like that kind of tail end of my games. And uh, with that, I do want to say to everybody out there, um, I want to I wanna put it out to you guys. Uh, if you guys want me to review a specific game, because we're going into the off season, there's not going to be as many games. There's still plenty of games for me to review, but there's not going to be as many big, hot new releases. So, if you guys want me to review a game, uh, let me know in the comments below, and I will seek out that game and review it. I will say uh, there's a couple of caveats, because as I said at the top of the show, I am a poor father uh, with not a ton of money to just drop on this. Uh, so uh, please keep your games to games that I can somehow play for free. Um, so like Games Pass games. Um, I also have to be able to get it on Xbox. Or like a free weekend, if it's a free to play weekend and you're like, man, he's never done a review of this, throw me a comment. I'll download it, I'll give it a try. Uh, that's how I reviewed Fallout 76. So, like, if you guys want me to review something, uh, I'm, I'm putting it to you guys. You don't have to, but if you do, if you want me to review something in Games Pass, if there's a game that's older that I'm probably not as likely to review and you want to know what I think of it, I don't know why you'd want to know what I think of it, but if you do, um, put it in the comments below and I'll seek it out and I'll review it for you guys. Seriously. So, uh, thank you guys for continuing to listen to this and happy Thanksgiving and happy everything. And, uh, as long as you guys keep listening to these, I will keep making them. Thank you very much. Did you enjoy that horrible content? Well, there's more of a horrible content all over this channel. You can check out our horrible podcasts or you can check out our other horrible reviews. Be sure to subscribe and turn notifications on, and then we'll let you know when horrible products are ready for you to view. You can also do so at Facebook, Old Man Gaming. And then, we can notify you in two different places. Fun! Also, click any of the links around you to witness some of that horrible programming right now. I mean, why do anything else? It's YouTube.